In this video, I would like to show you how you can run Go DSP Guitar on Windows. And for this, I have got a fully updated Windows 10 uh, machine here, where, well, it's more or less stock. There's not a lot in, uh, that is yet installed. So uh, we will go through the entire process uh, together about how to set up your audio interface and how to set up Jack on Windows and how you can then use it uh, to run GoDSP Guitar. So um, the first thing you will have to make sure is that um, if you want to, to do any uh, real-time audio processing on your system, then on, on a Windows machine, you will have to make sure that you use an audio device that is capable of the ASIO uh, protocol, so to say. So it, what ASIO does is basically it bypasses a lot of the Windows, uh, the ordinary Windows audio driver levels, the, the mixer, etc. And it goes more or less directly um, it, it provides a more direct path to access the audio hardware. And you will need that to get uh, good latency. And then on top of, um, of uh, the Azure driver, we will run uh, then Jack, the Jack audio server, which is uh, also a tool that is very common for uh, professional grade audio or, or real-time processing. And it uh, allows us to do a lot of stuff like routing audio from uh, or between uh, different applications and from applications to audio hardware or from audio hardware to applications. Um, okay, so let's start. The um, audio interface that I use uh, currently for this demonstration is a Behringer UMC 204 and because that's what I have lying around here. So I will go to the Behringer website, go to downloads and select audio interfaces, USB audio interfaces. And this is the the UMC. 204, so it currently this is the HD version. I got the non-HD version, but I don't think it really matters. And then we would say we want software, we want to have software and we want to have drivers. And there you, we will see the UMC driver that is for Windows 10. So let's just download this. We'll have to accept a license agreement, and then we just save that file. We can close that. And then we can go to our downloads directory, and there we have the driver. It's just a zip file, so we can open it with Windows internal tools. And there we have a setup we can run okay and so that was Quite quick. Now we see we got the driver running here. You can select a buffer size for ASIO, and we got volume controls, etc. So, yeah, that appears to be working now. Okay, so the next thing, uh, after we have installed the SU driver, we will have to install the Jack audio server, which is what 
a lot of professional grade audio applications used to access the audio hardware or also to communicate with other applications. So I'll just search for Jack audio server. Okay. The first hit and then it's jackaudio.org and then we can go to downloads. And there we see a, an installer for 64-bit windows. We take this one, save it, download completed. And then we can just run the setup. And we will do a full installation, leave everything at default, finish. Okay, now we get Jack installed. Let's just quickly check it. So we now get a, a, a new entry in our start menu, which is this QJack CDL. And let's just see. Okay, let's open up the setup window. And now the important thing is uh, you, we have to enable this, uh, we have to need to make sure that this real-time mode is enabled and then on the interface tab we get lots of different options and we have to make sure that we select the Azure driver here if we want to have good performance. So that's basically what is important. Sample rate we leave at the choose the native sample rate of the interface, which is uh, in this case is uh, 96 kilohertz frames per period. We can just leave at the maximum and other stuff we don't have to, we really don't have to change. So that's basically set up. Then we can just start the Jack Audio server and take a look at the graph. Okay, and now we see we got we got our audio hardware here. So we got the two input ports and four output ports that we have on this interface. It's a it's the UMC two zero four, which means it has two inputs and four outputs. And we we see these here on on the connections window. Okay, so. Um, Next thing we do is we um, download uh, go DSP guitar. So we go to github.com slash Andre PXX slash go minus DSP minus guitar. And then we take the latest release. And from there we download the first asset, which is the binary release. And we save that file. And now we can see we basically got nothing uh, which we can use to open this. It is a tarball, so we need a uh, an archive tool to open this. And the archive tool that I would use on Windows to open tarball is a 7-zip. So it's 7-zip.org. There we can download the stable release for 64-bit windows, save the file, download completed, and then we just run the setup again. And now we get 7-zip installed. All right, and now if we double click on the tarball, it will open with 7-zip file manager. And then uh, this is a, a gzip compressed tarball. So inside the gzip compression, we see the actual uncompressed tarball. So we have to double click on that again. And now we are actually inside the archive. And there we see this GoDSP guitar folder. We can just drag this outside into our downloads folder. So that just gets extracted. So we see now it is extracted here. 
And we can close the archive manager and see what's inside. So there we got all the auxiliary files like configuration files and scripts and impulse responses and TLS keys and so on that uh, ship with the application. And we also got all these executable files here that are for different architectures for Linux 64-bit uh, ARM, Linux 64-bit uh, x86. And we also got 64-bit uh, and 32-bit uh, binaries for Windows, and they all come in a normal and in a debug uh, flavor, so to say. The, the normal uh, one without the debug uh, suffix is the optimized version, so that will run faster uh, on, on your computer. And, uh, you will be able to achieve lower latencies with the non-debug version. The debug version is basically only if uh, if you want to report bugs or something. <coughs> okay, so then we can open a PowerShell window, which is basically a terminal. Then we can navigate to downloads, go to SP guitar, and then it's similar as on a Unix machine, we just run the DSP executable, in our case, it's the DSP win AMD 64.exe. And then we can just hit enter. And now um, it will start a web server for us and Windows Firewall will ask us if we want to allow traffic from the network to access uh, the DSP executable, so to say. If we allow this, then we can uh, remote control the uh, the DSP, change the um, change the signal chains and the parameters, etc., from another computer on the network. But probably we don't want to do this, so we do not accept this. We cancel this because local access is always allowed, as far as I know. And now we get uh, go DSP guitar running, and we. If we open up the graph window, we can now see it looks similar to what we get on Linux. So we now got the uh, GoDSP guitar um, application, which has two inputs and five outputs. And then we can just establish connections like, on, uh, like we do it on Linux as well. So we can, for example, go from capture port, from the capture ports uh, to the inputs and then from the outputs to the playback ports and from the master we go to the out uh, to the playback ports three and four which is where my monitoring is uh, connected so that's basically how we can set this up and i think we can just can we just un no we can't just undrag it ah okay we have to right click and then we can disconnect these things okay and to connect them you just pull from one port hold down the mouse button and then drag onto another Okay, so that's uh, quite intuitive, I would say. Okay, so then we, we get uh, all the connections set up. And then we can just open a web browser, navigate to localhost colon 8080, and accept the certificate warning. And then we get the, uh, the usual web interface here. can see if we enable signal levels view that we basically now see the noise floor from the converters and uh, DSP load which is very low because we're not doing anything currently. So from now on it will work the same as on as on a Linux machine. We can just add effects and configure them and do whatever we want. All right, so that's how you can use uh, GoDSP Guitar on Windows. And if you want to uh, terminate the GoDSP Guitar process, just go into the terminal window and hit Control C. It's the same as, as on, on a Linux machine. And then finally, if when you're done, you can stop the Jack Audio server again and release processing resources.
So <clears throat> that's basically it. And I hope you enjoyed this video and make good use of this software also on Windows. Uh, one final note though, um, the real-time audio performance on Windows is not as good in my experience uh, as on Linux. So if you can run this on a, a Linux system, you will probably get uh, better performance if you if you run it on a Linux system, because the um, the Linux uh, kernel is more optimized for uh, for real-time tasks. So you can get you can achieve lower latencies or f and without dropouts or with fewer dropouts on uh, when you run this on a Linux machine. So I would suggest if you can run it on a Linux machine that you do this, but it also uh, works on Windows as you as you have seen. Okay, have a lot of fun with this and bye.